I just got back from a mastermind where I was in a room with 20 hard money lenders from across the country. Stick around and I'll share what I learned from them. Hey, if you're interested in hard money lending business, please subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell icon so you get notified every time we come out with a new video. Thank you. My name is Rodney Miller. I'm a hard money lender in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. I loan in Texas and Oklahoma. If you're interested in hard money lending, the business, the borrowing side, um, you've come to the right place. You're going to learn a lot. Stick around. So I go to a hard money mastermind um, about once every six months, and they're across the country, Baltimore, Maryland. This one, the last one was in Nashville, but um, I met with several hard money lenders. It, the, the mastermind is growing, but I think the first time is like 10 of us. Now it's up to 20 of us, but um, good group of guys from all over the country, basically. And uh, we get together and we just kind of share information on what's going on in different markets, uh, the similarities, the differences, kind of how we're lending money, uh, tips and tricks on on kind of how we how we do things. And so um, just got back excited after I'm always excited after I leave those meetings because really good group of guys. But I'm going to share with you a few things that uh, I picked up from them. So the first thing is uh, everybody's keeping things really tight. Things are changing really fast across the country, some areas more than others, but things are slowing down. Houses are sitting on the market longer. So uh, we're being a lot more careful about underwriting and, you know, not looking at comps from six months ago because comps that happened six months ago, sales that happened six months ago, might not be really reflective of what's going on in the market today. So we're really having to tighten that up, trying to find uh, comps closer to three months out maybe, but even uh, having to, to really take into account what's going on in the last month or two, because things are really changing fast. So that's one of the big takeaways. You know, on that note, as soon as I got back, I was working out, I got a realtor buddy of mine in Edmond, and I was working out with him and I asked him what the market was looking like. And he confirmed, he said that things are really kind of starting to slow down, uh, especially in the upper end houses, you know, things over 200,000. I know we still have short inventory, but people just aren't sick because people aren't selling their houses right now at the low interest rates. But things, even with the low inventory, things have slowed down probably for the uh, probably for the holidays and the end of year, maybe. But because uh, we do still have a pretty robust group of people, volume of people that are moving here from from out of state and other places. So I expect things to stay pretty strong, but things have slowed down a little bit. We'll see if that's uh, temporary or if that's going to be um, it's going to be permanent. Overall, everybody at the meeting was pretty optimistic in terms of, uh, you know, opportunities coming up for, you know, because a lot of us fit, fix and flip houses and we, you know, we like to buy rentals and stuff like that. We haven't seen a really good downturn in a long time. And, and so that should create opportunity um, if things start slowing down for the home buyers again, for us as investors. You know, really since 2008, 2009, things have just been going up, up and up and up. So we've been kind of waiting for this moment that might be a good time here pretty soon to start picking up some deals and that'll help us on the loan end. But we also want to pick up deals for our own portfolios, but also that'll mean more loans for us, for fixing flippers and, and people are picking up rental properties. So hopefully the slowdown will, and this craziness that's going on the last decade or whatever, will start producing some opportunities. We can get back to buying houses at 60, 70 cents on the dollar again. Another thing that was brought up is uh, people are seeing more, these guys are seeing more commercial opportunities, retail, office, industrial. Um, this stuff is uh, being brought to us uh, on a higher, at a higher rate than it was before. And, you know, you've seen stuff in the news that commercial is going to take a beating and especially in the bigger cities. But um, commercial is starting to slow down a little bit, and I think it will produce a lot more lending opportunities for hard money lenders. You just have to position yourself to be able to pick up these these larger deals. And there's a little more that goes into these commercial deals, like environmental studies and stuff like that. But if you're prepared for it, there could be some good opportunities coming up. Got a question for you. Are you in a mastermind, real estate, entrepreneurship, anything I need to check out? Let me know in the comments below. I'd be interested to hear if you're in one and you like it. Another thing that we've all agreed on is banks are starting to tighten up. We're getting more deals from the banks, which is good for hard money lenders when banks start uh, busting deals and we start having people come to us as a last resort or not even a last resort, but when banks, you know, will not finance things, they're getting a lot more conservative. You know, like I mentioned before, the, the smaller towns are starting to tighten up on that. Their LTVs are changing. You know, we all know the interest rates are high. Um, so all that is leading to, uh, you know, bankers are just getting scared. So we're finding more deals uh, through banks, which is a good opportunity for lenders. 
for hard money lenders because we're, you know, with the alternative source. But at the same time, we rely a lot on, on the exit strategy of our borrowers. So, you know, we're short term fix and flip loans or borrow loans, but we want to be out of it nine, six to nine to 12 months. And so the flip side of the banks tightening up is that uh, it could hurt our exit strategy on our borrowers if they can't get these loans from banks. So that could be kind of a, could be a problem, you know, you know, long-term or short-term. So the fact that there's a flip side to that, that, uh, you know, if banks are tightening up and we rely on the exit strategy, that it could be harder for uh, our borrowers to take us out of the loan with long-term financing with the banks. So we got to keep a close eye on that. A lot of us are seeing uh, to that earlier note about the banks uh, tightening up and the exit strategies not working out the way that the original bar had planned to take us out of the loan, but they're extending their loans. There's a lot of loan extensions going down. And, and I've noticed an uptick in my loan extensions. People can't or aren't ready to pay it off. So they're asking me for an extension of another six months to one year, which I will gladly extend it. Some of the lenders there take a hard line. They, they want you out of it. They want to churn their money. I'm not like that. Um, I don't mind doing extensions to help out the borrower. You know, as long as they're paying on time, it's not a big deal. But yeah, I was really kind of surprised that some of these lenders, even if the borrower's paying on time, they they uh, they come up on their uh, on their balloon day and they want them out of the loan. If they don't get them out, if they don't get out of the loan, some of these borrowers consider that a default, pursue default, which I thought was kind of crazy. But anyway, an interesting thing that uh, all of us, it just shows that all lenders are different across the country. Even lenders in the same city are different. Another thing we talked about is defaults. Uh, seeing a slight uptick in defaults, not too bad. Nobody's really uh, too worried about their default rate, but kind of thing I found interesting, uh, somebody brought it up, as they mentioned that another lender always wanted to keep their default rate at about 10% and that uh, he would get really, if, if it was below 10%, he would loan aggressively, you know, raise his loan to value, give out more money and be more aggressive on getting more money out there. And then when he hit 10% or went above, he would get really tightened up on his loans and get more conservative on what he would loan out. But he always wanted to have like 10% of default. And he felt if he didn't have that, if he dropped below that, he wouldn't be aggressive enough. And he went above that. He's being too aggressive. He needed to tighten up. And that was his gauge. I kind of learned that. It's kind of interesting. We don't have any defaults right now. And most of the hard money lenders group don't have a 10% uh, default rate. But uh, I guess some lenders consider that like, that's just the way you run your business. 10% below, you're being not aggressive enough. Above, you're being too aggressive. Finally, raising capital has seemed to have gotten a lot easier for us. As you know, a lot of hard money lenders, you know, we're not rich. We raise capital from other people. We pay them a return on their money, and then they fund these loans that we put out on the street with the fix and flippers or, you know, the rehabbers, whatever. But we raise capital. And it seems like with the stuff going on in the stock market, stuff is starting to slow down a little bit. People are more receptive to uh, our offers. You know, we go to them and try to explain them the hard money concept and explain to them how safe it is because we get the first mortgage on the property and all that. They're more receptive to trying out a new loan, a new um, investment vehicle. You know, so many people are used to stocks and bonds and mutual funds, and it's really kind of hard sometimes to introduce something as like hard money even sounds sounds bad. It sounds like a uh, loan shark stuff, but you got to explain to them how hard money works, but it's gotten a lot easier to explain this to people and uh, a more receptive audience, I guess you would say to the hard money lending uh, investment. Overall, everybody enjoys the business. All 20 or, uh, you know, there was people there from $2 million out on the street to a hundred million dollars. So small operators, gigantic operators, everybody loves the business overall, very positive experience, really cool people. Not like you're, typical banker, but just entrepreneurs, people that, you know, fix and flip houses, bought a bunch of rentals, but got into lending. Uh, so they're, you know, they're kind of entrepreneurs. They're not really corporate buttoned up bank lenders. The fun group. Uh, I really enjoyed hanging out with them. I'll do it again in six months and I'll report back to you what I find out. Hey, thanks for watching. Uh, we got a ton of free stuff below borrowers. We have free reports, how to flip a house report, look below how to guarantee a hard money loan below. I think it's the seven steps to guarantee a hard money loan. If you're a borrower, if you have a property, uh, just go to our website and click on the application, fill the application out, and we will get a hold of you soon, uh, right away and talk to you about your uh, project. Um, for investors, we have a 
you know, if you're interested in investing in hard money loans, we love to talk to investors. We have a free co-investor brochure. Look below, click on the link and you can get that brochure. Now, if you enjoyed this content, you might want to check out one of my other videos, episode 23. Uh, it's an interview with Jay London on how to invest in self-storage. We talk a lot about hard money, not hard money, master, just masterminds in general. We talk about masterminds and uh, he's belonged to several uh, real estate mastermind groups. We think that everybody should be in a mastermind. If you're an entrepreneur, if you if you want to be an entrepreneur, if you want to flip houses, if you want to do burr or anything, you should find a mastermind and find people that are doing it and get in that room. So, and please like and subscribe to the channel. Rodney Miller, Hard Money Partner.